When we think about being filled, we only think about being filled with the Spirit of God. But we don't understand being complete in God. It, has not, it, it doesn't only have to do with being filled with the Spirit of God, but it's also about being built in God. If you have spiritual content, but you are lacking in the physical sense, you are still empty. Because the expression of the spirit can only be done physically. Wow. Wow, Amen. That's so good. As powerful as spirits are, they still need a body to carry out their will. Yes. I want you to pay attention to that. God doesn't use useless people. He only uses useless things. Mm. People cannot be useless. Wow. When he says he uses uh, uh, foolish things, a thing is lifeless. He's not addressing a person. God does not use foolish people. Uh, Show me one person in the Bible that God used that was foolish. You won't find. You can find less fortunate people. You can find people who have been rejected, people who have gone through difficult things, but you will never find useless people. Because it's a disadvantage to him. It will be a disadvantage to himself. Because in order for you to express something divine, the physical nature must be built up, must be prepared to be able to carry out that nature. That when the spirit expresses itself, the physical nature is able to carry what the spirit has given. The, the idea that many believers have is that God controls you. God doesn't. God is not a demon. God does not take you by force. God does not take you by what? God doesn't force himself. God works with us. And if he's going to work with you, he needs you to be a freeway that he can drive through, he can ex express himself through without having any speed bumps, without having corners, turns, that when God wants to express himself, he can go through you without nothing stopping him. So you filling your bottle up with water, but there is no exit. It's, use, it's not useful because no one can partake of that water. The point is not to remain full. The point is for you to be filled enough that you can pour out and you are filled again and you can pour out. If you are only filled and you keep it, you are still useless. Wow. I, I don't know if somebody is understanding what I'm saying. If you are filled, but you remain filled, you're useless. The Bible says that Jesus was walking and preaching and a woman with the issue of blood comes and touches him and Jesus stops and says, who touched me? They all, the disciples said, Lord, everyone is touching you. What do you mean who touched you? He said, somebody touched me and power left me. Meaning if Jesus was at 100%, he went to 85. He could tell that he depleted. He said, somebody touched me because power left. Notice Jesus is saying power left him. Virtue left him. But it shows you how much of a freeway or how uh, um, compatible Jesus was with his father, with the spirit of God, that when somebody touched him and had a prayer, God could express himself without Jesus even needing to be consciously aware that he needs to pray for you. Yes, yes. That by touching him, the power inside of him could live and come into you and heal you. He didn't need to know what you're going through. Jesus. 
All you needed is to touch him and that is the access point. I don't know if somebody is getting this. So if you are somebody that it is difficult for you to even sense the Holy Spirit, it means that even God pouring in is a problem. If you cannot sense him, then how do you know you're filled? How can you tell you're filled? When we go to the gas station and we are pumping gas, or as as we will say in Africa, you're putting petrol. (laughs) That's what it's really called, petroleum. It's, It's in America, they like to change everything. You know, so... You're putting petrol in your car. You, you watch out for the meters to see how much you're putting in. So if you went to the gas station with $20, I rebuke that in Jesus' name, you're going to fill up your tank. May you be able to fill your tank daily. Amen. Not just 10 to get here to there. No, we rebuke that. So you're, 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 you're putting petrol in your car. You're observing the meter, but not only do you observe the meter, the pump itself has a sensor thing, I believe, that when the gas gets to a certain place, it stops pumping. So there are ways to know your tank is full. Not let me drive and see if it is full. When you leave the gas station, you are confident of how much gas is in your car in order for you to take the journey that you need to take, whether it is that week, whether it, whatever days it is, you know, I have enough to carry out my errands and go to the places I need to because I know what is inside. So, as a child of God, every time you're in the presence of God, you must know how much has entered you. Yes. Every time you're in service, you leave service. You need to know what has been impacted. Amen. Did my faith increase? Did power increase? What area of my spirit was increased and what part of my soul was changed? How can you go to a weight loss program but you're not even checking your weight? <laughs> you're not checking how many calories you're eating. You're not doing your cardio but you're expecting the weight to drop. That's insanity, and not the workout. Remember the insanity workout, not that. This is just pure insanity. This just doesn't make any kind of sense. Like, how are we trying to grow? We are not paying attention to the things that make us grow. Mm. Now, some of you are even afraid of the scale. (laughs) <laughs> yet the scale just tells you the truth <laughs> no it's true it just tells you the truth amen. and if you can take the truth then you can grow amen. then you know how to adjust amen yeah you can't change it unless you know true so as a child of God you have to be able to to observe what am I lacking because If patience doesn't have its perfect work in me, meaning that if I have not allowed myself to go through all the fights, all the battles, all the this, all the that, and I'm forced to be patient, I'm forced to be patient. The patience there works for your character, Mm. your ability to wait, to trust, to understand that you cannot accelerate things beyond your growth. Amen. I used to want to tell my, my son when he was much, much younger and explain things to him. And I realized that, man, what I'm trying to explain to him, it is not that he doesn't want to understand. His age is not permitting him. Uh-huh. He doesn't have the capacity at that time to, to digest that. It is impossible. It doesn't matter how much I try to push on him. He can't take it, not because he doesn't want to. He's actually willing, but his age is not permitting him. He has not developed to be able to receive and to contain that. That's good. So uh, uh, Eva knows 
I'm very strict with my son because of what I know he is going to do. Ah, but when that truth came into me, a lot of things dropped. The pushing him stopped. I started dealing with him based with where he was, not what I want, but where he is. Oh, my, my hair is in there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me put it away. Thank you, Uncle Chris. Um, so I started dealing with my, with, my, with my young man according to where he is, not according to better. Yeah. I started dealing with him according to where he is and not according to my will and my wishes and my thoughts and my desires. I had to put that out of the way to make sure he's empowered according to where he is. When you're able to be observant, you will not measure yourself beyond where you are. Because that is a mistake that many do and make. It's a great, great mistake that I've seen a lot of believers make. And the mistake is purely simple. It's a big mistake that is continuously done by many, many believers. But the mistake is just basic mistake. But it is continuous everywhere. You look around and you see it all the time. People measure themselves higher than what they are. The Bible says it clearly. Do not esteem yourself beyond where you are. Don't overestimate yourself. So if you don't know your role, then how do you know what to do? That's good, Papa. So there is a problem if we have this idea that we are all equally the same. That's a lie. That's just not true. You cannot be a person of power if you think think you're powerful. You need to know areas that you're weak Mm -hmm. in order for you to be strong. That is why Paul said, when I am weak, then I am what? Strong. Then the power of Christ can rest upon me. What area will the power of Christ rest upon you if you don't even know where you're weak? How will God express himself through that weakness? Because you have to remember, you don't get stronger. You don't. It is God that reveals himself stronger through you. I want you to remember that. You will never become strong. That weakness is not going anywhere. That weakness will forever be present. The only difference is this. God will be expressed in the area of weakness. That instead of the weakness, you will see God. Amen. Amen. Paul did not say, when I am weak, then he will make me strong. He said, then I am strong. Why? Because the power of Christ will rest. Jesus will be the one that is there now, where the weakness is. But if you have not gone through the perfect work of patience to really see who you are, you will try to strengthen things that will never be strong. Mm. I'll say it again. You will attempt to strengthen things that will never be what? Strong. It's impossible for them to be strong. They have no ability to be strong. So no matter what you do, No matter how you slice and cut it and dice it, you are not becoming strong. It is Jesus that becomes strong through you. You surrender weakness. You don't pick it up and strengthen strengthen it. I'll say that again. You surrender weakness. Your weakness is surrendered. It is not picked up You can't perfect it. You can't do anything about it. Just think about it. That is where you're weak. How will you fix it? Nothing in you can fix it. It is only Christ that can sit in that place and change it. So when the Bible is speaking about lacking nothing, 
when the scriptures are talking about that you may be perfected, lacking nothing. It means, let me open myself up and begin to dissect what areas am I lacking. Because if I am lacking in a place, it means the perfect work of patience has not been done. Mm. How do I deal with situations? Do I give it to God or do I panic? Mm. If I panic, I am still the one trying to deal with it. Yeah. I have not learned to give it to God. There's nothing wrong with worrying as long as you give it to God. There's nothing wrong with being anxious as long as you give it to God. When burdens come, what is your first instinct? Do I take it and say, God, here I am. You know this situation. I don't even need to tell you, but you know what is going on. Lord, take over. And you leave it to God. That means that your soul has been changed. It is not trying to solve, th solve things it cannot. It means your mind has been changed. Your mind is not trying to do things it cannot. It has given itself to God. When there is a demonic attack, do I look for who is going to pray for me? Do I run to anointing oil and anoint myself? Do I start screaming the blood of Jesus? Or do I stand like somebody who has power and authority and power and say, you are under my feet. You can face the devil head on because you are confident in who you are in God or will you start, the blood, I plead the blood, I plead the blood. Oh, oh, Father, anointing, sister so-and-so, Satan is attacking, Satan is attacking. Your confession is Satan is attacking. When did he not attack? <laughs> Even when you don't know he's scheming and planning to destroy you. And whenever you see a physical attack, it means you are delayed. Because every attack starts spiritual. Wow. By the time you're seeing it physically, you are at the finish, it's at the end of the battle. They have already done something spiritually. Now they're in the physical way you can do nothing about it. They know they got you. Wow. So many fight battles when they are physical. You are supposed to deal with them while they are still in the spirit. That is why the Bible says when the enemy comes rushing in as a flood, the spirit of God will raise a standard. Notice, it is dealt with spiritually. You don't wrestle against flesh and blood. The moment your battle becomes flesh and blood, know that they have overcome the spiritual battle. Many are trying to put off physical fires. Nope. The moment you're putting on physical fires, just know there's a big disability that has happened spiritually. So what are you lacking? Read verse 5 for me. James 1, verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, mm -hmm. let him ask of God, that give it to all men liberally, and upbraid it not, and it shall be given him. God is saying this, yeah, our, our, our uncle James is saying this, because Jesus is our father, James is our uncle. Uncle, uncle James is saying this, he's saying, ask God for wisdom. God gives it to anyone who asks and he doesn't judge you for asking, but he will give it to you. You see, the reason why many are lacking is we are not wise. Christians like to say discernment, be discerning, but the truth is what they're trying to say is use wisdom. Mm. Oh, yeah. The problem is they don't have wisdom. Come on. So they go after knowledge. But even the knowledge they go after is not even spiritual knowledge. It is Facebook and Instagram and 30 <laughs> second clips. <laughs> so there's complete misinformation. Come on. They think wisdom is discernment. And discernment is knowledge. And all these are completely not what they think. Wisdom is the application of divine knowledge. 
That is why when you go to school, they don't teach you wisdom. They only give you information. Mm -hmm. They inform you. Now, the, the wisdom that you carry, not the spiritual wisdom, but the natural wisdom you have, will determine how skillful you will be. in accomplishing or carrying out the assignment that has been handed to you. Uh, making sense so far? Yes. Making sense so far? Yes. So, in order for you to lack nothing, it is not just going through trouble. Going through trouble by having wisdom in, in, with it while you're going through the tribulations, when you're going through the fights, when you're going through hardships, while God is building you up to lack nothing, it is in that moment you need wisdom. Because wisdom will tell you what workout to do, what you need to do. Imagine somebody wants to be strong, but all they work out is biceps every day. <laughs> they are forgetting you need shoulders more than biceps. Yeah. They are forgetting you need core for your overall strength. Amen. You need strong legs. You need strong this. The, the smallest muscles cause the biggest problems. Those are the guys that need the most work. But if you don't know, you will work out the wrong way thinking you're going to be strong, but actually you become what? Weak. So, as God is making you a man and a woman of dominion, the question is this, very simple. What are you lacking? Because it's not just a matter, I decree and declare her, I have power. It's good, but where is the power going? Ask yourself, are my words powerful? When I decree a thing, does it happen? It means that my spirit has not taken over my tongue yet. Wow. wow. It hasn't. I am speaking from my soul. I am not speaking from my spirit. Because if my spirit speaks, it is the spirit that quickeneth. If I am speaking from my inner man, then what I say will happen because my inner man operates by the Spirit of God. Amen. But if I say, ah, this is going to happen, and that doesn't happen, then I know there is weakness. Mm, that's so good. In the area of the sword. It means I don't have a sword. The Bible says the word of God is a double-edged sword. It did not say scripture. It said the word of God. Rema. Falling from the mouth of God is a sword that is able to cut and divide soul from spirit, born tomorrow, the word of God. When You see, when I'm prophesying, you see the sword. Mm -hmm. yes. Because I'm able to go to the matters of the heart, matters of the spirit. Matters. But if you open this scripture, it can give you an overall estimate of what is going on. But it is not a discern of the hearts of men. Yeah. If I read for you, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Right? Yes. How did that discern your heart? Huh. It informed you. Right? There was no discernment there. There was knowledge of death and the Lord came to save us from sin. But it is not discerning your heart. That's why the Bible itself testifies about itself. It says the word of God is good for doctrine, for rebuke, for building up. It doesn't say it's good for discernment. Wow. <laughs> See, like our, our brothers and sisters who, in Africa, we call them reformed believers. They believe in the word of God being the ultimate authority. I believe that. But they don't believe in prophecy. They don't believe in healing. They don't believe in apostles. They don't believe in anything. They don't believe in the continuation. They believe this is all you need. 
Uh -huh. uh, cessationist. This, this, is all, this is all you need. Jesus is saying, no, that's not all you need. And neither can you find anywhere in scripture it says that it ended there. It is actually on the contrary. There's a lot of holes in the narrative. But men like to control what they can control when it requires them not to believe. Mm. You see, to work supernaturally, it takes you to lean on God, not lean on pages you can point to. Yeah. See, human beings, if you tell them, if you run a thousand miles, you're going to heaven, they will run. If you tell them, just believe you go to heaven, they will find it difficult. Because they're running, they can control. The believing they can't. How sure am I? It takes you to trust and to lean on God. It is different. Is this making sense for somebody? Yes. Is this supporting somebody? Yes. So your eyes have to be wide open. open. Your eyes have to be what? To understand, where am I? Where am I operating from? Where am I? And where am I operating from? Am I lacking something? Am I missing something? What areas are weak? What areas need to be strong? You need to know that. Because the day you stop knowing that is the day you find yourself in trouble. Mm -hmm. That is why we have so many believers that are stagnant. They don't grow. You don't grow by accident. It is intentional. Yes, it's true. Growth is intentional. Spiritual growth is intentional. Spiritual growth is what? Intentional. intentional. It is not by accident. It is analyzed. It is focused upon. It is measured that you become so determined within yourself that you say, no matter what, I'm getting to where God wants me to get to. No matter what, no matter what, no matter what. It may be difficult, I am here. No matter what, it may be troubling, I am here. No matter what, it seems like things are good, I, I, I am here. That is what God is looking for. Growth is intentional. Just because I'm fasting and I don't know what I'm doing, it doesn't mean I have overcome. Mm. That is why I tell you all the time, if you're giving and you're not praying, don't give. Keep your money. You're wasting it. Are you hearing me? Yes, Papa. I want you to stand. You are going to pray and tell the Lord, Father, open my eyes to know my areas or areas of my weakness that I may be strengthened. Father, open my eyes to know the areas and the places of my weakness that I may be strengthened. I do not want to be weak. I want to be strong. But I have not been analyzing myself in the way that I should. I have been missing it. So, Father, I pray in the name of your son, Jesus, as I am fasting and praying, open my eyes to see the areas that I am lacking. There's places in my life that I am missing things. There are areas of my life that I am not strong. There are areas of my life that 
things are shaky. Father, I pray in the name of your son, Jesus, show me those places that I may be strengthened. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Lift your voice.